um, if you don't mind, I'll take that mic. I, I tend to move around and stand around and then talk. Uh, warm good afternoon. It's been raining, a very nice environment everywhere. Uh, we are having a wonderful second day of DiacareCon. And I, it's a pleasure talking to all of you. And I think you know we can do a one-to-one -one very interactive session instead of a monologue. And wherever you feel you want to discuss and talk, I think with the permission of the chair, we can make a discussive session. Um, I'm a pediatric diabetologist by my training and by my experience. And that is why the topic diabetes in young. So uh, the actual idea was to talk about the dilemma when we talk about diabetes in young. And uh, this you know, is a Times Magazine's first page, which is showing a young teenager and you know, th with a question mark, diabetes, are you at a risk? So which means that most of us, uh, healthcare professionals, not just diabetologists, but physicians as well, uh, primary care physicians, all of us are seeing a rapid increase in the prevalence of diabetes that, for that matter, not type 1, but even type 2 diabetes and other kinds of endocrinopathies and hyperglycemic episodes in adolescents, in young adults, in teenagers. And this is why we are going to today talk about what are the different kinds of diabetes when we talk about younger population. So now, whenever I start to make a presentation, you know, we, we think and imagine, what do you mean by a young population? My partner here always has a discussion with me that who 38 is okay? And you have to think about malnutrition modulated diabetes. You have to think about type 2 diabetes. You have to think about thyroid disorder related hyperglycemia. You have to think about FCPD in our country. You have to think about MODI. And also you have to think about latent autoimmune diabetes of adult. So all of these forms of diabetes that are, that are in the spoke are what we have to think and talk about. So now this is the graph. Kya re, kya re, tha, the, a very beautiful, this is a very old slide, but it is still pertinent today that when and how, uh, you know, the prevalence and the age of diagnosis of different types of diabetes and the, you know, different population is there. So now like Sir said, we have included every young <laughs> format of a person. So the most pertinent or the most suspected type of diabetes in uh, kids, pre-pubertal is type 1. After the pubertal time, during the pubertal time, differentiate again with MODI, monogenic diabetes. Think about malnutrition modulated diabetes. Think about type 2 diabetes as well. Think about other endocrinopathies as well. And for any of them, there is a prospect that this person or this chapter, think about monogenic diabetes. But the catch here is that if uh, you want to label somebody as a monogenic diabetic person, you have to get a genetic panel done. Without that genetic panel, you cannot label them as somebody having monogenic diabetes or else you just call them as somebody having early onset of type 2 diabetes. Now, let's talk about if ketonuria is positive. If the C-peptide is less than 0 0.9, it is type 1. But if the C-peptide is poor or dicey, say 0.9 IO, 1.0 IO, think about FCPD. Also get a lipase amylase done. Think about pancreatitis. FCPD, again, will uh, not always uh, come up with pain. You know, there might be some teenagers who just come with steatoria, uh, just mild pain, you know, in the left flank, and nobody gets an USG abdomen or an abdominal X-ray done. Uh, think about other endocrine disorders present. Think about the genetic defects. There are Rogers syndrome that you know we've studied. I don't remember the whole collective thing, but uh, there are uh, syndromes along with B12 deficiencies that might cause some level of dysglycemia. So always and always try to follow a sort of algorithm. This is not the ideal one, but this is one from the pediatric diabetes supplement that I've picked up. It's very beautiful. Now the diabetes care in 2018 brought out a position statement about type 1 diabetes um, in the children and adolescent. So up to 2017-18, even these people, the international people, the International Society of Pediatric and Adolescent Diabetes was focusing only on type 1 diabetes. It was only after that that their focus, as in when they came to find out about the epidemiology, their focus started to shift, oh, this could be something other than type 1. And they wanted to talk about that. So they are talking about different sorts of uh, diabetes and how the characteristics of these prevalent forms would be different in terms of the age of onset, 
think about age of onset again, the slide which we were showing in terms of the age and, and the, kind, uh, the uh, age at diagnosis, the male-female ratio again is, is something which can be variable in uh, typical diabetes but otherwise has not much of a difference. The HLA, we don't often do that but HLA D3 and D4 is important when you want to talk about type 1 diabetes. Ethnicity, again, we don't have to go through the ethnicity, but we are Southeast Asian Indians. And the onset of type 2 diabetes is also one decade earlier in our ethnicity in comparison to the Caucasians. So again, a beautiful slide which you all can, you know, refer to. Uh, do not forget antibodies. There are some type 2 diabetic patients who have positive autoantibodies and then there are some type 1 which are autoantibody negative. So do not forget that. It is important on the basis of some sort of a future therapy comes out for stem cell therapies or some sort of you know pancreatic transplant. You need to know what sort of diabetes and autoantibody status does the patient have. Obesity and decanthosis nigricans. Do not forget that. Um, Generally, with obesity, we have to see presence of a buffalo hump, acanthosis present or not, skin tags present or not. Try and, you know, observe, clinically examine the patients. It's not just, you know, uh, the lab reports. And again, I'll, I'll quote my partner over here. He says, Tamara generation ma you know, you just see the lab evaluation and we were taught to do a clinical examination. And that is what I have learned from him. So, with all due respect, I think uh, we have a sir also here, all, all due respect and, you know, credit to sir. So, there are various dilemmas. Now, that was the main point and my main focus over here, I'm, I'm you know, be going to be very quick. There is low level of awareness, not just among the patients, even amongst us as healthcare professionals, there is low level of awareness about different sorts of diabetes and the younger population. There is significant psych uh, psychosocial impact. Uh, if you've heard the name of Dr. Earl Hirsch, he has just come out with an uh, article in Lancet very recently talking about the you know, kind of stigma that the person with diabetes or a child with diabetes faces. And kudos to Netflix or this hot star people and they are making uh, movies wherein the type 1 diabetic person is depicted as a healthy person just that they need insulin. So we are trying to come out of that stigma and talk to people about that. There are patients who have reported poor blood glucose control and there is some sort of therapeutic inertia where uh, we are scared of hypoglycemia and that is why we do not strive to achieve a good glycemic control. So again, it is pertinent that in such a forum, we talk and we discuss and we interact more. Insulin and medicine doses are skipped, missed and uh, again, this is not a forum where I must name popular people, but people do tend to go for alternate therapy instead of taking one single uh, dose of insulin or even take medicine. We've heard that is, that is again something that I learned. If I would fight with the patient, I have been taught that you know, they not let give them, let them have their mind ka piece. But still, people get drawn to alternate therapies more often. So sit, spend some time with your patient and the family as well as you know their peers whosoever wants to question and whosoever wants to talk to you what is wrong with my spouse what is wrong with my child what is wrong with my mother any any person in their family please spend some time and counsel and talk to them about what sort of uh, why are you prescribing any sort of prescription that you're prescribing for your person patients struggle to remain fully compliant because um, Lucky they do prescription, don't send them home. Again, sit, talk to them and explain. And I feel that uh, if people can read on Instagram and Facebook and talk to therapists, we are in a generation which is transitioning and who would sit and be able to listen to you. Patient and physicians both have a concern about both hypo as well as hyper now. Again, when we talk about a younger population, they are very tech savvy. They'll come to you and uh, you know send you articles about newer uh, technology that is available, newer medication which is available, newer injectable which is available. So please, uh, you know, do not just uh, be cross with them. Just sit and try and listen to them also. That is what they are coming to you for. And try as much as possible to you know solve their doubts and questions. 
there is a simple protocol uh, when we talk about type 2 diabetes and the younger person which we have to follow if there is an asymptomatic child or asymptomatic teenager uh, talk about obesity management get their bmi done plot a growth chart and you know try to find out what are the risk factors uh, a uh, important question comes when we talk about type 2 diabetes in kids is reversibility and uh, parents will come and ask you kitla divas dawa levani chahiye even if it is not insulin like forget type 1 type 1 is altogether a different story but even when it is type 2 diabetes you have established a diagnosis they'll come and ask you saheb kitla divas sudhi godi lekhani chahiye madam kitla divas sudhi le so so again exercise per emphasis diet a healthy diet no emphasis is very very important when we talk about type 2 diabetic in these children don't guarantee them that you will reverse their diabetes but make sure to explain it that if you follow a good routine it is something of a probability and not if not possibility but also tell them about the future that if you are a type 2 diabetic right now you know if she is a female uh, her reproductive age line do a preconception counseling talk to her about different uh, complications that she might have with that so there are some suitable tests that you have to uh, you know get done for type 2 diabetes hb1c of course do a ogtt a fasting and don't forget the other uh, you know concomitant uh, test as well blood pressure a uh, lipid panel albumin excretion a fundus all of these please please do not miss so this is a, a you know an actual picture of a patient of a 14 year old boy with type 2 diabetes um like very very evident acanthosis nigricans so i think i'm i'm going to skip a little bit about monogenic diabetes because that's what the next speaker is going to talk about but something which is very much uh, imperative for us to understand that it is still uh, responsible for prevalence of up to 1 to 3% of young onset of diabetes and again importance is of screening of the genetic panel there are so many types of uh, modi if you see there are 13 which have been identified and then there are more depending on the genetic panel it is done for free in cmc velur uh, it is done for free i think in chennai at uh, mohan sir center and i think sujoy sir center also in kolkata but i'm not sure about his center um if you fill up a proper form and get it done you can get it done for free but you have to just make sure that they have at least two to three generation positive family history of di uh, of diabetes and one of the family member at least should have had onset of diabetes of before 25 years of age and of course responding very well to sulfonylurea neonatal diabetes again something that uh, is is good i would say you know because there are remittable neonatal diabetes and uh, it is diagnosed in the first 6 months of life not typical of an autoimmune type 1 diabetes it is it could be transient it could be permanent but again you have to get a proper analysis done um, if not done if it remits you know if you wait for 6 months and if it remits and if it is the transient type well you know congratulations to the parents but if not you know they'll have to continue with insulin FCPD again a nice X-ray of uh, you know fibrocalculi pancreatic diabetes. Um, we are a tropical country. India is a tropical country. You know I'm standing here and sweating on the stage as well. So <laughs> we should not forget to differential diagnose any of our younger patients. Say you know uh, coming to us with complaints. try and get a small x-ray abdomen done ct scan baad mein but get an x-ray also done it will give you some idea you know of fcpd there could be presence of uh, uh, sorry absence of any other uh, you know risk factors for chronic pancreatitis like absence of alcoholism absence of uh, say you know hepatobiliary diseases or some other chronic liver diseases and that should make you realize that it could be fcpd so another important thing in a country like india where we have uh, a lot of people living below the poverty line it is malnutrition modulated diabetes and this is a you know uh, guy a typical picture their bmi is always less than 16 and uh, always always happens in a poorer background because since the time of in utero the fetus never had proper nutritive uh, uh, source so the fetus did not develop well the child the infant did not develop well the child did not develop well and that uh, you know 
led to you know, sort of a you know relative insulin resistance and this person will have a very very high insulin requirement but still there will be no ketosis or no ketonuria something very very typical of how you want to differentiate uh, malnutrition modulator diabetes with type 1 is that it will have a gradual onset in comparison to type 1 which will have a very rapid an onset absence of ketosis is one thing and c peptide would be more than 0.1 there will be insulin resistance and but still in spite of severe hyperglycemia no ketosis will be present um, lada again somebody is going to talk about but lada is 1.5 diabetes um, a subclass of type 1 diabetes again uh, happens in people about the age of 25 and uh, you know one typical picture of a lada person is that for six months they'll do very well on ohs it will be after that, after six months, that you know they'll start to show that they are not responding well to any of the OHS, be it sulfonylurea or metformin or anything. And they will have typical features of insulin deficiency, weight loss in spite of uh, good sugar control. They will, you know, they'll be very kekexic on their look, and uh, by by the looks of it, even without a laboratory test, you will be able to say that there are some signs and symptoms of insulin resistance. So a very beautiful uh, paper by Dr. Desai and Dr. Clark. It was uh, actually Dr. Paul Zimmet who termed the uh, term, coined the term LADA. And he said that you know there were some types of patients when he studied his data uh, during UKPDS that uh, that showed autoimmune positivity did good for six months and after that they needed insulin. So that was that, I know I'm up of time. And I'll uh, just skip to the importance of screening for microvascular and macrovascular complications in our patients. Younger patients with diabetes, do not forget that. It's not just a diagnosis, but after diagnosis management also, which is very important. Screen for micro, neuropathy, nephropathy, retinopathy, uh, every, every single organ in the body that could be affected by sugar, please check them. So a beautiful study, the Today 2 study, said that at least one complication occurred in 60% of the participant. At least two complications occurred in 28% of the uh, you know, participants in this study, where the diagnosis of diabetes was at the age of 13. So you know, try, try and always screen patients, follow them up well, and manage them well. Severe cardiovascular events could also be you know, one of the major things that we have to do. Just one more minute. So don't treat lightly because they are kids or because they are teenagers or because they are young. This is the population that is going to take care of the country tomorrow. So in fact, you have to be very strict, very stringent with them and try and make them understand why we are being so strict with them. All right. So uh, take care of the targets as well. Try and see what you're doing. I think I've made a larger slide than I would have been able to talk about. This is the summary management of diabetes. This could be all, all different types of diabetes and the young. And just take care of the patient quite well. But education is something important for any sort of diabetes. And this is what we are doing at our institute called RIMS. I invite you all to visit sometime. And with that, over to the chairperson. Thank you so much.